Well, I guess without further ado, I'd like to uh, uh, introduce our speaker of the day. Uh, professor Eugene Park is the Korea Foundation Associate Professor of History, and he's also the director of the James Chu Jin Kim Program in Korean Studies at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, Professor Park <coughs> has uh, previously taught at, uh, the, at UC Irvine and other institutions as well, uh, b uh, both here in the United States and in Korea. Uh, he got his degree at, Har uh, at Harvard in 1999. And he's ha uh, he has a very, very long list of incredibly impressive uh, uh, publications. Uh, in terms of books, um, in 2007, he published uh, something called Between Dreams and Reality, the Military Examination in Late Japan, Korea, 1600 to 1894. And then his second volume, uh, published by Stanford University Press in 2014, is titled A Family of No Prominence, the Descendants of Pak Do Kwa and the Birth of Modern Korea. Uh, Professor Park is currently preparing a few uh, monographs. Uh, one, actually, on this on this topic, uh, the title tentatively uh, is "Progeny of Fallen Royals: Resurrection of the Kaesong Wang in Korea," and he's also uh, co-editing with uh, a very famous Korean historian by the name of Lee Tae-jin uh, a book called "Peace in the East: An Jung Gun's Vision of Asia in the Age of Japanese Imperialism." And he's also currently uh, a co-editor of the Cambridge History of Korea, uh, Volume 3 on, on the Joseon Dynasty. Uh, Professor Park is, as you can see from the titles that I've recited out loud for you, is a specialist of the Joseon Dynasty. And today's talk will actually be about the fate of the uh, uh, former royals of the Koryo Dynasty within the Joseon Dynasty. Am I correct? Okay. Um, in addition to uh, these uh, numerous monograph publications, Professor Bark also has many, many peer-reviewed articles, including uh, more recently, The Phantasm of the Western Capital, Imperial Korea's Redevelopment of Pyongyang, 1902-1908, uh, published in the International Journal of Asian Studies, um, The Progeny of the Kodo Dynasty, the uh, current project uh, published in Seoul Journal of Korean Studies uh, uh, this year, and Old Status Trappings in a New World, The Middle People, Chungin and Genealogies in Modern Korea, published in the journal Family History two, two years ago. In addition to these, there are so many more. And uh, if you're interested, I'd be uh, more than happy to share these publications with you um, after the talk. So please do let me know. But since uh, uh, we do have to listen to the talk instead of me talking about all of these publications here, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, end the introduction here. And I'd like all of you to join me in welcoming, uh, extending a warm welcome to Professor Professor Park. Okay, well, thank you, Professor An, for your kind uh, introduction. Um, the, so, this is, so the talk I'm going to give today um, is about my current uh, project, uh, which will be my third uh, monograph. And uh, uh, the project uh, um, is relatively new. In fact, uh, I began working on it quite spontaneously in December 2013 uh, during the winter break when I happened to be investigating uh, the genealogy of the living uh, Wangs in South Korea to see how they're related, if at all, to the Korea dynasty. And uh, I have a longstanding interest in genealogy, not just of Korea, but of all societies. And uh, because I ended up spending so much time uh, in, in during, during my winter break, I, I told myself I may as well uh, write a book. And so that's how it all uh, began. Uh, before I go any further, um, if I may, is there anyone here who is a Kaesong Wang or Wang from Korea? Anyone? Uh, yeah, I, I, I was thinking that if any, there's, there can't be more than one or two because uh, um, it's obviously uh, there are many Chinese Wangs uh, today. The on the planet, but in South Korea, uh, as of 2000, when uh, the, the government uh, conducted its last survey of uh, the surnames and the ancestral seats uh, among its citizens, uh, there were uh, about 20,000 out of the population of about 40 million. Um, in stark contrast, uh, uh, the common, the co most common surnames like Kim's account for 20 uh, percent of uh, the, uh, the South Korea's pop uh, Korean population. And that the five most common surnames of Kim, Yi, Park, Choi, and Jung uh, uh, account for uh, half of uh, uh, the Koreans uh, in this world. Uh, so as you could see, um, 
So here's my table of contents, and uh, just uh, very briefly, I'd like to explain why I'd like to examine these particular uh, uh, areas. Uh, the topic, li among, among those listed here, the one that has re received the most attention uh, and also uh, discussed or talked about among ordinary Koreans is uh, the, the, the May 1394 massacre of uh, uh, the, form, uh, the royals the, of the Goryeo dynasty, which the Joseon dynasty re replaced, uh, supplanted in uh, uh, August 1392. In contrast, uh, the Roman numerals, uh, uh, the three, four, and five, uh, the re reviving ritual airship, composition of uh, the descent group and the subversive narratives are areas that uh, have received the relatively little attention and uh, the areas where I, I would like to think that I'm making some interesting uh, contribution uh, to uh, the historical scholarship, on the, on the, especially on the Joseon period. So why these particular areas? Um, in traditionally in East Asia, um, especially uh, China and Japan, uh, China and Korea, but, but s somewhat to a lesser degree in Japan too. And also this is, uh, no actually, I'm sorry, I take it back. Uh, not just traditionally in East Asia, but, uh, but for any society practicing shamanism, right? Um, when an individual dies, uh, the event marks uh, the death, uh, I'm sorry, the, the event marks uh, the birth of an ancestor. And that individual's uh, soul uh, needs to be uh, nourished. Okay? In, f in fact, the shamanism believes that uh, the world that we live in is uh, um, inhabited, inhabited by uh, these uh, spirits uh, everywhere. E even the seemingly inanimate objects such as uh, rocks, rivers, mountains, trees, house these spirits. And uh, one of the fundamental concerns of a shamanism is to make sure that the, these uh, spirits do not cause any uh, trouble, uh, difficulties in our lives. And for an individual in a shamanistic as well as a Confucian society, one must make sure that one's uh, own ancestor spirit is uh, kept nourished. Uh, what this all means is that uh, almost regardless of how a political entity uh, uh, the, uh, the de denies and uh, vanquishes and destroys the previous political entity, still there's a real need, more practical religious need, as well as uh, the rationalization for the sake of legitimization to, uh, to address or to take care of uh, the spirits of at least uh, some of the most uh, the, uh, the distinguished capable rulers from the previous dynasty. And therefore, once the Joseon dynasty uh, replaced the Goryeo dynasty in 1392, what to do with uh, the spirits of uh, the Goryeo monarchs uh, was, in, uh, was, a, not was a question loaded with both political and the religious implications. And so ap even after, so after uh, getting dis uh, dispatching most of uh, the Wangs or the former royals. Now the Joseon dynasty had to worry about the question: Where am I going to? Where, where are we going to find the Wang to uh, to perform these uh, rituals or the sacri offer sacrifice to the Goryeo kings? Um, composition of the descent group is something that I'd like. To, I'll try not to get into too much. Uh, this is the most sort of the what the part that required most tedious, uh, time-consuming research, uh, most empirical, um, uh, the old-fashioned genealogical research, and I'll just try to mention it in passing to give you a sense of uh, 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 how the 1394 massacre was uh, was a brutal in that the, it apparently evidently killed off most uh, or majority of the Wangs at the, uh, to, the, the, to, the, to, uh, to the degree where um, more than 90 percent of uh, the 20,000 Kaesong Wang today uh, among Koreans descend from one single guy who happened to survive that massacre in the 1394. Um, although I have some questions or if not doubts about the, uh, the reliability of his claim that the, he was a descendant of, a, of an early Goryeo dynasty ruler. And finally, the subversive narratives. Um, of course, the Joseon dynasty as a successor of the Goryeo dynasty had to come up with uh, all sorts of reasons and excuses to justify why it replaced the Goryeo dynasty, uh, but, uh, which meant that uh, especially the, uh, the, the late Goryeo kings, uh, they had to be uh, portrayed in a negative light, as, as negatively as possible. But by the 16th and 17th centuries, um, 
even uh, the members of uh, the mainstream Joseon uh, elite, including scholars and officials, began expressing different ideas about uh, these uh, late Koryo kings, and some even outright challenging uh, the highly negative uh, depictions or portrayals of the, these uh, late Koryo kings. And therefore, I, uh, I, uh, I would like to talk about uh, them in the context of uh, the subversive narratives. Okay. As I mentioned uh, a moment ago, there are about, about there, there, well, I guess it's, uh, as of now, th there must be oh, far over 20,000 Kaesong Wang um, in South Korea, which means that the North and South Korea combined together, as well as uh, the Korean diaspora included, perhaps about uh, a little uh, less than 30,000 Kaesong Wang in the whole world. And uh, Dynasty began was founded in 918 with a Wang Gun. Mm -hmm. So when he died, you see the posthumous uh, temple named uh, Kezo, literally meaning the grand progenitor. I can't do it in uh, Mandarin Chinese. And uh, uh, the Goryeo Dynasty lasts a little under half a millennium. And uh, uh, without get, uh, talking about, of course, I'm not going to talk about all the, uh, the individual Goryeo rulers, but the, the main point I would like to make is that the more than 90 percent of the living Kaesong Wang today. More than 90% of the living Kaesong Wang today claim descent from this one guy. Um, I, 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 I apologize for making the font so small that I was trying to fit all this Wang Mi, who was living in, th uh, living in 1365, and reportedly, he was a direct descendant of uh, one of the, the youngest son of a King Kezo, who was at the founding of Goryeo Monarchy. In other words, yes, today when uh, Kezo Wang says, I'm a direct, I'm a descendant of the Goryeo dynasty, the royal house, the only king that he or she can claim as the ancestor is just one king out of a 34. So what this means is that the, uh, and especially the early Goryeo rulers that each uh, tended to have uh, many sons, uh, easily. Although the late Koryo kings tended to have a fewer sons, but still we could easily imagine uh, that uh, by the time the Koryo dynasty ended in 1392, the, the population of the Wang could have easily been at least a couple thousand, if not more. But again, uh, so clearly then, the descendants of uh, the main line of the royal succession, they, were, uh, they died in 1394, or um, unless they somehow managed to hide out and uh, assume different surnames. And, uh, Oh, and in case you're wondering, so the green, uh, the individuals indicate that green are the ones whom the living Kaesong Wang claim as uh, the, the founding ancestors of uh, their uh, particular descent line. Um, and uh, the one here, Wang Jie, uh, according to this chart, he's the, the only son of a king, King Zhang. Uh, yeah, there are some living Kaesong Wang who claim that they're direct descendants of uh, this uh, Wang Jie claim to me is uh, spurious because, uh, first of all, he doesn't appear anywhere in the official history of the uh, genealogy of the Goryeo uh, dynasty. And secondly, when his father, or alleged father, Qin Zhong, was uh, deposed by the Mongol Yuan court in 1351 and banished until he was put to death, he was only 12 or 13. Uh, so uh, I suppose biologically, maybe it's possible uh, with such an as this, but uh, what makes it even what makes this claim even more uh, uh, hard to believe, difficult to believe, is that according mm -hmm. to the descendants, um, this alleged son Wang Jie uh, uh, achieved the post of uh, the uh, uh, post of uh, uh, the prime minister uh, during the reign of uh, the succeeding uh, monarch. Now, if somebody, if, uh, if someone indeed achieved such a rank or the office in the late Korea, but there's no way it would not be. The other two, uh, 
the other individual, or three individuals whose names are um, indicated, uh, color green, one here, another one here, third one here, all of their claims are problematic in, uh, uh, in various ways. Okay. Um, Previous studies on the Sejong Wong um, have examined the various areas. Um, the, again, the 1394 massacre had received the permit of something. Interestingly, another aspect of our, uh, the massacre, one particular aspect of, of the massacre, the 1394 massacre that has received much attention, is in the context of, in conjunction with a, a Buddhist a ceremony known, known as the ritual of uh, the water. which uh, um, uh, Dr. can explain much better than I can, but uh, it is performed to pay for and uh, pray for the other animals of the earth. In fact, uh, uh, the official account of the Taizong history uh, relates that the, king, the founding ruler, uh, the, the dynastic founder of the Taizong dynasty, King Hongzhou, also known as King Taizong by his uh, popular people name, um, he soon ordered Three temples, uh, each of which was uh, located near the site of a massacre to pray for the one. So you might think, how can somebody just kill somebody that moment it doesn't matter to pray for them? Uh, but again, from the perspective of uh, the Chosen State and also uh, the founder of the Chosen Nine, here, this is outrageous. Other studies that have looked at the Taizong Wang or have uh, given some coverage of uh, the Taizong Wang that they endured include uh, the, the, the research on uh, certain uh, Taizong Wang uh, local, local region of Jiji, Korea, and also uh, the publication of the first Taizong Wang genealogy was much later in the late Taizong period in the 18th century. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation And some of the common claims uh, that enjoy pretty wide circulation is that uh, 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 the small number of the Wangs who somehow survived or escaped uh, the, the massacre, they all assumed a different surname by adding one, two, or more extra strokes to the Chinese character for the surname Wang. So I guess the easiest uh, surname that you could come up with by adding just a one stroke is the Wong. Another common claim is that uh, after the after the Chosen State uh, staff were uh, exterminated the Wangs, the Chosen State continued to uh, maintain you know, a watchful eye on a small number of the Chosen Wangs that survived and get to reconcile. Not only that, and uh, the, thir uh, the third common claim is that uh, the Wangs uh, who did not uh, who were not not received any meaningful office, or they did not uh, serve in the Chosen Dynasty government at all, and the Wangs did not bother. And if, that, if they're not going to treat us well, we're not going to uh, seek the office of Chosen uh, in the Chosen government. So that's the third common claim. And all three claims are problematic in uh, many ways, as I uh, uh, hope to explain uh, in, in the remaining part of my presentation. My overall argument today is Descendants of a small number of the surviving Taizong Wang who were able to endure it, a good number of them went on to achieve uh, important uh, positions in the Taizong Dynasty government. Moreover, the Taizong Wang and Taizong society in many ways mirror uh, other descent groups in the sense that the some Taizong Wang, of course, uh, served in the central government. Others uh, uh, went on to constitute the local elite managers in, in their various. Uh, 
a specialist uh, living and working in Seoul, the capital. Song, apparently, is uh, in common or uh, in most countries. And, there's, and the same can be said about uh, any Korean <coughs> Christian group. Um, uh, so contrary to uh, the so common belief among many Koreans today that if you are a Hyun or a certain Catholic or Buddha or any that, you're all young by or something like that. It doesn't work like that. And uh, in fact, uh, I think a bunch of like any uh, early modern society in uh, across of Europe and Asia, uh, the Joseon Koreans are no different and yet the people can be assumed and the surname and the identity in the last of two centuries. And uh, if you're going to ask, if you want to ask me that, if you're wondering how am I going to justify the obtain assertion, well, if you will take a, uh, uh, a wide DNA analysis about it becomes a technology that Look at uh, at males, uh, Y DNA uh, sequence, and uh, and uh, a scientist can easily determine roughly, and also uh, a particular individual, a male that is a Y DNA uh, DNA uh, male must impact a replica from his father, and by looking at the DNA sequence, now scientists can easily uh, estimate or determine uh, when a particular mutation occurred, roughly how many generations ago, and the mutation is very rare. Where and how a particular individual population would uh, uh, arrive uh -huh. to live uh, at that particular location by which group. And uh, among many interesting findings, a wide DNA analysis by looking at the uh, just a pathway type of a male uh, is that uh, uh, the majority, or perhaps uh, most, of uh, the deceased men using uh, the traditionally, uh, the surname that's traditionally regarded as a priestly surname. Cohen type, so called Kwan Yin. Uh, but the majority of them share or they could trace back to genetically to one single male who lived uh, about uh, 3,000 years ago, about 100 generations ago, roughly the time of the Exodus. So perhaps the Old Testament story about the Moses and the Aaron, because the clan was a uh, ground and they so they said they were just the poor. What about the Korean surname and the ancestor too? Uh, there's no meaning to person with a surname and ancestor too and a uh, Y DNA sequence. It's very rare for sure. And so these are invent these are assumed identities. <coughs> unless a Korean person is of a true aristocratic descent who is only applied to a tiny percentage of the population by way of including in any society that has an aristocracy or seems to be very modern or even Korea. Uh, okay. Uh, So the May 1394 massacre, uh, uh, the events leading up to it, uh, for an understanding of uh, the events leading up to it, uh, the events that unfolded in roughly a year and a half after the founding of the Joseon Dynasty in August 1392 and the massacre in May 1394, uh, were entirely dependent upon the official Joseon According to such an account or portrayal, Kim Taejo, the founder of the Joseon Dynasty, uh, is, uh, is as vigorously uh, insisting that uh, she wants to be benevolent. She wants to so, so let uh, the former royals uh, enjoy comfortable lives. Uh, because thanks to the mandate of, because as the, as the recipient of the mandate of heaven, he is now the king. But why should I fear contrast, the high-ranking uh, officials, uh, especially those uh, uh, serving in the ministry of uh, serving in the ministry of punishment, Hongjo, and the censorate, the Taiban, uh, they consist they continue to insist that uh, uh, for to prevent any sort of future danger or to uh, um, nip in the bud a possible uh, conspiracy that might be All members of the royal house, all Wang, the Taiwan Wang, must be at, must at least be uh, 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 sent to internment camps. Uh, if not, they can die. And this whole going back and forth uh, lasted about uh, about a year and a half. And the what 
have finally tipped the scale in favor of uh, the, uh, the hard line that they just argued in. It is an alleged a conspiracy early in 1894 when reportedly a blind uh, fortune teller uh, was, consult was, was approached by some officials who were known to be uh, uh, quarter loyalists and that they asked the blind fortune teller, so uh, what, does the, what does the future uh, behold? Uh, what, what, is, what, what, is, what is the fate? What is going to be the fate? Somebody would ask such a question to a fortune teller is, uh, is a serious matter. And uh, for the next uh, two months, the Bourbon court uh, blind would ask, uh, interrogated, tortured the fortune teller and the various uh, individuals whose names were mentioned. And uh, the court uh, uh, concluded that, uh, uh, that there was a threat against, uh, there was a real threat against uh, the new Yang Bourbon dynasty. And finally, in the fourth lunar month, uh, The summer of 2014, I visited the Kamwa Island, the northern tip of the Kamwa Island at the mouth of Shan River. So the picture on your left is a picture that I took as I faced uh, due north. And uh, the hills that you see in the background are actually north of the river. Uh, and from the so-called piece of the river, so Kamwa is the land of Kamwa Island. And uh, this picture shows, uh, shows a strait, a narrow body of water. Local legend. Um, this is where the Wangs, who were interned at the Kamo Island, were put on ships. Uh, they were told by the agents of the government that they would be allowed to live in peace at another island nearby, Hodong, and that the Wangs were happy. Uh, most of them complied to board the ship, and uh, while the ships were on the, in the middle of the strait, uh, the divers and others had uh, drilled holes in the Having said that, um, uh, for none of these uh, three sites, I have been able to uh, uh, confirm the exact site of the, the massacre. To me, it seems that the, the, it was a highly sensitive issue, and the central government did not want to leave that piece of trail, and also the locals were uh, afraid to talk about it to, uh, for some time. Here you can see, um, uh, you, uh, we're, we're 
looking at uh, a part of uh, well, the pages from a 17th century roughly as uh, the surname origin. Um, and uh, this, is, this is one of my all-time favorite Chinese works because unlike most, if not all of the, the, the Disney genealogies out there on the Korean family that make all these acclaimed and all the famous or the direct descendants of either the Shewa or the Kaya or the Hellfish, this early 17th century genealogy uh, stays away from any of that, none of that. In fact, uh, it seems like uh, consider this source highly reliable. And according to this source, Wang Mi, a man whom I mentioned uh, at the beginning of my presentation as uh, one of the uh, lucky survivors of the massacre, and his younger brother Wang Hun went on to produce, uh, um, produce uh, 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 direct descendants. Having said that, I would also like to note that the source Wang Mi and younger brother Wang Hun, uh, so to uh, trace their genial ancestry backward to King Taejo way up there. Um, one obvious problem, one problem that sticks out, uh, sticks out, uh, sticks out immediately, at least to me, is that the number of uh, generations is too few. I mean, we're talking 470 years, but how many generations are we looking at? One, two, three, four, five, six, ten, even about ten or even less than ten. So which produces an average generation of uh, what, about 45 years. In other words, that every generation, a father had a Here's another um, interesting uh, primary source. Uh, as I uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, there's no reliable source telling us uh, how many Wangs died in 1394. But interestingly, this uh, late 17th, early 18th century source called uh, Gungaksa Hamidi Hak. Commentary on uh, the list of uh, spirits, or the, the uh, origins that they gave uh, banished spirits, uh, I guess uh, prayed for, honored, or uh, at this Buddhist temple called the Gungaksa. So, it's, uh, so this uh, source offers uh, a list of what it claims is, is a record of the list of uh, the, the Wang who died in 15, uh, 15, so you could think of it as a 15, a list of 15. Total count about 130. 130. And it tells you where they died, how they died. Uh, now, of course, uh, especially for those of you who are concerned with history, maybe the uh, history of India, you guys know that just because something is written doesn't mean that it's, 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 it's reliable, right? So, in other words, if this was written um, about what, uh, more than 300 years after the event, uh, there's no way we could say that it is reliable, but on the other hand, I would like to think, and this is something that I, I look forward to kind of poking mm -hmm. Professor Ahn's brain afterwards, is that uh, given the importance of uh, the ritual of uh, water and land, and also the Buddhism's uh, concern for paying for the dead, especially uh, uh, a person that has died in the terrible circumstances, um, I would like to believe that such lists were in circulation. After the massacre, oh, here I'm, I, I see I put down the lunar calendar date. So according to the lunar calendar, the massacre took place in the fourth lunar month uh, of 1394. So the, for almost a decade, uh, for almost a decade, the central government continued to hunt down nationwide uh, uh, mainland, hunt down, uh, go after the Wangs, and then those who were apprehended were either strangled or burned alive. Right? And uh, interestingly, uh, such Wangs uh, were caught and killed during this period um, uh, of period of these all
coming from uh, uh, the, 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 the branches, the same as an illegitimate son uh, of the Soviet uh, royal. And also, immediately after after the massacre, uh, the court ordered that any living Wang, regardless of, of uh, if, if, uh, who has become a, or whose ancestor had a silver surname Wang, because they can receive a surname from the silver Wang of Zhu, uh, they shall trying to erase the memory uh, of the Sokoria royal house. But in, in 1413, in the 12th lunar month of 1413, King Tejong, the third monarch of the Sokoria dynasty, who is much, who put the Sokoria dynasty on a solid footing and, sta and, uh, and achieved political stability, um, evidently he felt uh, confident about his authority. And uh, uh, the official account portrays him as uh, capable of uh, simply uh, brushing off or fighting off uh, these uh, suggestions by his officials that the, the persecution should continue. Uh, so unlike his father, King Tejo, Tejo is portrayed as a monarch uh, who is uh, mildly confident of uh, his authority. And finally, Tejo uh, issued an edict of toleration in the 12th lunar month of 1413, which declare that the Wangs shall be left free to uh, And we find that the, his immediate uh, successor, um, famous King Tejo, the one who commissioned uh, the invention of the Korean alphabet way back in the 100s, among other things, and uh, Sejong, the son and successor of King Wenjong, um, they, uh, the official accounts of their reign show that the gold coolers <coughs> were quite uh, collective about So with a certain reminders of monuments or buildings or ideas or individuals or the memories of a certain individuals, Sejong and Wenjong said they should be off. Uh, and the state, uh, and, uh, and the state uh, uh, will uh, have uh, the, the government to transfer. Whereas the others, they were uh, simply content to uh, neglect the, the legacy of the reminders. There was also during this period, the reigns of a Sejong and a Wenjong spanning like years from 1418 to um, 1452, when certain uh, famous uh, uh, civil officials of uh, the late Korea period who remained loyal to the Korean dynasty, and some even died, such as the famous Jimmy Zhu, um, the Chojong government officials declared that they're, he's a good guy. And yeah, he's a, on the one hand, you can say that they oppose the founding of the Korean dynasty, so they're bad guys, but now, the Sokoran dynasty in a firm setting, uh, foundation. Uh, the rulers at Sejong, Sejong and Wenjong are declaring that the certain older loyalists, uh, they should be honored uh, for their loyalty to, the pre uh, to their ruler at the time. And it was in this political context of a uh, more benevolent successor of the Korean dynasty when the court also began searching for a Wang offer sacrifice, uh, sac offer uh, to perform ancestral, uh, ancestral ritual in honor of the Korea dynasty. Um, but where, where are they going to find them? I mean, where did so many Wangs uh, at Yongi die? And uh, within a year after King Wenjong ordered that a true Wang be found to be appointed as uh, the ritual heir to perform these uh, duties, um, a local official uh, found one, in, uh, uh, and this was 1452, and uh, the man, at least according to the Chojong dynasty official account, was a Wang Kunye, who was said to be a direct descendant of a Chenjong, uh, the early early Korean dynasty king, who reigned from 10, 1009 to 1031. In other words, uh, the best candidate they, that they could find was somebody who could only claim an early Korean king as a as, uh, as his last royal ancestor. So again, this is a reminder of the severity, the extent of the, the massacre. And uh, so from 1452 to 1540, Wang Suye, his son, grandson, and I, be I believe a great-grandson, uh, one after another, served 
as a ritual heir performing certain uh, uh, rituals, uh, ancestor worship rituals in honor of uh, their Odo ancestry. But in 1540, the last one of them died without, uh, 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 without a legitimate son. And she had uh, many illegitimate sons before you, but by then, uh, Gibbon, Korean society had come to uh, 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 denigrate and discriminate against children, mothers, by uh, uh, a man, the concubine. So the court um, had to conduct a new search for an heir. And uh, between 1541 and 1588, uh, a certain Wang Ti, whose uh, background is obscure, and uh, his uh, immediate descendant uh, served as a ritual heir. Um, but uh, by 1588, the court had come to conclude, uh, uh, mainly because of uh, the complaints from other living Sazong Wang, that uh, this line of ritual heirs, line descendant Wang Yi, is not And uh, in 1589, the court finally settled for an individual, uh, a certain Wang Fun, who was a direct descendant of Wang Mi. I mentioned a couple of our occasions early in my presentation, the early Zhou guy. And the Wang Mi, again, is, uh, was uh, reportedly a direct descendant of the founding, uh, the founder of the Gordian language, Sun Tezhou. So they settled for a Wang Mi, the descendant of Wang Fun. And since then, except for a brief stretch in the 19th century, Direct descendants of a Wang Mi uh, continue to serve as a ritual heirs and perform uh, ritual duties until the end of uh, the Shogun dynasty in 1910. Uh, so here briefly, um, yeah, my book is going to talk about the 20th century, but uh, today my presentation is not going to. I'll just mention that the after 1910, the position of a ritual heirship uh, was up for grabs. Uh, it was considered something prestigious, and uh, so among the living Wangs, there's a lot of a lobbying, jockeying. Politics to try to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to obtain, to uh, acquire that position. Um, the venue wh uh, where uh, the facility where uh, the ritual heirs traditionally have performed uh, the, uh, the ancestor worship rituals um, is located in a place called Ma uh, to the north, uh, north of Seoul. Very close to uh, the GMT, pretty close. I would say, if one could simply drive through, uh, uh, it, 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 I would say the GMT must be the GMT, uh, less than 30 minutes, something like that, 20 minutes. And uh, those who were members of the South Korean delegation that day uh, just had to visit Taehong, the North Korean city, uh, to the north, the north, northwest of the GMT, uh, for various reasons, uh, they tell, uh, tell me that the road is like that, it's just about 10 or 2 hours drive. At any rate, um, uh, uh, the facility, the shrine is called the Song Yuzhan, uh, the hall of, uh, I suppose, the upholding the righteousness. Um, it, it may not, I'm sure it, uh, it, the meaning may not be clear to uh, many, if not most of you, but the name is quite uh, comprehensive uh, because when the Zhodan dynasty government appointed a younger brother of the last Goryeo king uh, to perform the rituals. And that younger brother, ritual heir, was given a very condescending and treatment title called Jun Yeung-jun, the prince who returns to the righteous. And here the righteous means meaning the holy man, the prince who submitted to, who surrendered to the holy man of the righteous. Um, and another point is that this is not a shrine honoring uh, the entire Goryeo dynasty or all Goryeo kings. Um, it, in fact, uh, after a series of uh, discussions, the Jodo early Joseon court finally uh, decided on uh, eight, nine uh, out of uh, 34 Goryeo kings that were considered especially great, capable rulers with Jina and Dark they should be honored. Um, this name is, uh, as I mentioned, um, more than 90% of uh, the living Sezong Wang today are direct descendants, or technically direct
like the findings of uh, Wang Yi and their early Huan uh, individual. Um, but there are others. And uh, my research so far informs me that already by the 16th century, there were Taizong Wang, or alleged Taizong Wang, whose uh, backgrounds uh, were obscure. And uh, some clearly were of uh, what, I, what I would call the middling social status. That is, uh, definitely not an aristocrat or young man, but the still social status was higher than that of an uh, average commoner. And this includes the Wangs who served or held the various executive positions in the central government. Um, and uh, uh, a few years ago, when I was looking at a household registration to register of a late 19th, early 20th century for Seoul as the capital, I came across that some Taizong Wang living in Seoul who were uh, merchants, uh, not commoners. So the Taizong Wang as a descent group, the membership was uh, not only diversifying, but um, there are people who originally who were not Wang, who were assumed the surname Wang, and even the ancestors who were from Wang family. What this tells us, among other things, is that Wang was okay knowing that you were Taizong Wang. You don't have to worry about being Kidnapped uh, by the central government and put to death. Um, at the beginning of my presentation, I uh, mentioned that uh, the Taizong Wang actually fared um, okay, if not pretty well, in, uh, the, in the Hosan period as far as uh, the presence in the central government is concerned. But here I'm comparing, uh, we see uh, a comparison of a numbers of a Joseon period uh, government service examination passes, so this is called the government service examination. And uh, I'm comparing the Taizong Wang, the population of, uh, the peak population uh, as of 2000 was a little under 20,000. And the Hamjong O, this is O as in fish, uh, uh, fairly unusual surname Wang family today. The population was even less, 13,000 in the 2000. Well, despite, in spite of their small population, the O, did fairly well uh, in the Joseon period. They produced uh, 24 civil service or bunhua examination passes in the Joseon period, um, analogous to late imperial China's uh, Jinshu uh, examination, presented scholars. Uh, well, obviously the number 24 uh, makes, it, makes it meaningless uh, unless one has an idea of how many, how other descents have fared or how many passed the civil service exam. It's a civil examination of the entire Joseon period. Throughout the Joseon, well, from 1392 to 1894, uh, for more than 14,600 individuals passed this most prestigious exam, and out of which the most successful descent was the Chenju Yi, which is uh, which is that which includes uh, the royal house of the Joseon dynasty, account for a little under 900 civil exam passes, and uh, uh, the Liang Pass, which is the second most common descent group uh, uh, in South Korea today. Population about four million uh, came in the eighth place out of the ten on the Yang Pass, and uh, about 200, 258 civil exam passes. The Hamjong O, the population 13,000, but 24 exam. That's that's quite impressive. By comparison, the Taizong Wang only nine. So you could say, so arguably one could so this not these numbers suggest that the Taizong Wang um, did not succeed in occupying the most important uh, positions in, in the in the Joseon power structure. But the numbers having uh, for the other examination categories, I think, are interesting. In fact, the Taizong Wang did better than the Hamjong O, 21 to 16, more than 21 to more than 16. Technical uh, service examinations, which include, which cover subjects like foreign languages, and, uh, astronomy, medicine, law, uh, accounting. Uh, the, uh, the, both the Taizong Wang and the Hamjong O produced uh, at least one. What this means is that the neither descent group produced uh, Chunyi, or middle people, or technical specialists of lineage in the late Joseon period. Because what happened in late Joseon Korea from about 1800 is that the certain lineages based in the capital city of Seoul monopolized the technical service examination. They produced uh, the, the successful candidates for generations, but neither went on to produce those in, in, in those lineages. In the interest of time, I'll just uh, skip over um, so, as I mentioned earlier, uh, by the by the 16th and most certainly by the 17th century, um, even the members of the mainstream elite, including scholars and officials, began uh, 
presenting um, their own interpretations or understandings of a late total victory that outright challenged or rejected the validity of the official account. Um, of, according to the official account of the how the Goldung Dynasty succeeded the Goryeo Dynasty in 1392, the 32nd and the 33rd kings of the Goryeo Dynasty Kings of Wu and Chun were not actually Su Wang. According to the Zhou the official account, Wu King Wu's father, true father, biological father, was uh, was a wicked monk named Xu Dong. Um, and uh, 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 but the supporters of a, of, the, of a King Wu insisted that the King Wu was the son of uh, the predecessor king of Wu. But uh, we find that the, the, the alternative interpretations of the Korea history that uh, began surfacing, emerging in the 16th and 17th century, actually insisted that no, the kings Wu and the Chang were indeed true Wangs. They were depicted as a false Wangs because the founders of the Goldung dynasty had to legitimize, justify why he was such a thing. I mean, that's a, quite a bold statement because they are now trying to make these, uh, uh, these statements. And also, there are other many way, uh, also in many ways, uh, the, the Koreans uh, across the status boundary um, expressed uh, sympathy for uh, the hapless Wangs. Uh, and uh, and as I mentioned uh, mentioned earlier, uh, some Goryeo loyalists were officially being honored by the Goryeo dynasty as early as the, the, the early 16th century. Moreover, in Korea. Articulations of an anti Yongde, right, the founder of the Joseon dynasty, uh, became common and more widespread. So, um, to, so for example, um, uh, in Gaesong, the former capital of the Korea dynasty, and some parts of the northern Korea, uh, there's a type of a soup uh, using uh, boiled pork uh, that is called a Tongke. Also, uh, in Gaesong and some parts of northern Korea, uh, when pe uh, people of uh, tradition performed uh, a sacrificial ritual in honor of uh, late Order General Choi Young, who uh, was a colleague of Lee Sung Dae, but who in the end opposed Lee Sung Dae, and Lee Sung Dae uh, executed or killed him. And that that and the, po the boiled pork offered as a sacrifice to uh, the General Choi Young is a known and, uh, and, and uh, there are many other examples. So certainly in the popular culture, there were these expressions of uh, uh, anti the anti uh, the sentiment uh, being expressed. So to conclude, uh, well, uh, actually I should not say, say conclude, it's more like a, uh, the, the, the list of uh, some final thoughts that I'm still struggling to uh, organize and ultimately articulate Um, I would like to note that uh, the history of the Taizong Wangs, their survival, and how they understand the Tao, it's a continuing discourse in the sense that, uh, uh, well, I'll give you one example. The Taizong Wang genealogy, uh, published around 1991, claimed that the Wang Ni, Wang Ni was not a descendant of a King Kojo, but Wang Ni was a descendant of a, a bit more recent tradition, King Hanzo, the 11th century. And uh, they made that claim based on the fact that, in fact, in the official genealogy of the royal Wangs as given in the Gozong Dynastic History, there is another Wang Ni with the exact same character, a direct descendant of uh, King Hanzo, rather, than the founder of the Gozong Dynasty. Uh, it doesn't work out. Chronologically, there are all sorts of Serious internal discussion, not a debate or an argument, and that they that they revert back to the uh, the traditional claim that Wang Ni is a descendant of uh, the King Kojo. So it's an ongoing discourse. Uh, why DNA haplotype research? Uh, I clearly uh, expect to shed some more light on uh, on the, the reliability of the, the genealogic claims. Um, unlike here in the in, in North America or in the West, uh, 
Europe, where so many uh, persons are interested in uh, getting their uh, data in bulk tested. Uh, it seems like in East Asia, there's no awareness of this technology, uh, perhaps in part because uh, I think most East Asians are just used to thinking of, them or thinking of, thinking of themselves in terms of Chinese container trafficking, rather than I'm comfortable, I'm poor, or I, I live somewhere, I'm one of these Chinese people. So it seems like the mindset is very different. Um, and uh, uh, so why DNA haplotypes? Um, I think my research is also about the historical agency, which is clearly about, has implications on uh, political violence, on the regime change, and also gender, in the sense that uh, when the early Goldong government uh, massacred the Wang, uh, the, the, uh, the government only went, went after men, regardless of race. The women, the females were killed. So now imagine a situation where all these uh, uh, little females were So this, I think the most dramatic example is that of uh, the very last in uh, of Korea, Jin the daughter, who outlived her father by uh, half a century. And that there are some recorded references to, to her asking uh, the early Goldong Chinese for more support, financial support, so that her she, so that uh, so that her, her slaves, her, 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 her born paupers, are uh, counted to ritual, according to her father, who obviously strangled her because he wanted to strangle her to death. Um, my research, I think, has some room for me to comment on the rigidity, plenty of room to comment on the rigidity and fluidity of the Goldon status hierarchy in the sense uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, the, the four status categories from the early Goldon to the end of the Goldon dynasty, namely the Yangban aristocracy, the top, uh, no more than top 5% of the population, the middle people, the Jin, no more than top 10% of the population, the commoners, Slaves up to 20, 30 percent of the population. The, this rigid status hierarchy remained intact throughout much of the Goldon period. Having said that, I would also like to again remind you that uh, the Wang, as well as the other uh, non-Wangs, that they found ways to uh, uh, pursue uh, uh, pursue upward uh, mobility uh, through various uh, uh, maneuvers, including uh, forged genealogy. Um, and the changing participation base of Golden Cold politics is also clear when you look at the history of uh, the Golden Wang, given that uh, in the course of uh, what happened the writing of uh, the Golden period, different defensive segments or different segments of the Kazan Wang's defenses uh, fared well during the Golden period. Um, and finally, um, perhaps something that might, uh, uh, could be something out of nowhere, periodizing uh, Eurasian history I mean, the, my research, uh, I think, can contribute uh, something to periodizing Eurasian history in the sense that uh, regardless of uh, particular regions or part of Eurasia, um, I find, as a genealogist, I find that uh, a family that was of an aristocratic status as of 1900, so you think it could be King, uh, King, Victoria, King, or King Edward VII, it could be of the, uh, of the, the Qing dynasty uh, 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 three, regardless, an aristocrat of 1900 could uh, trace his a reliable genealogy, not fake genealogy, but reliable genealogy from a historian perspective back to the Middle Ages. That also means that even someone like Queen Elizabeth could not trace an ancestry to the, uh, the, 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 the Castle of Elf, the royal embassy. In fact, to do that remains a challenge for genealogists, I think, what is called a defense of in contrast, a, a family or an individual who was of a middle class, professional middle class, or middle people, Jin status as of 1900, the reliable genealogy traces back to about 16th, 15th century, arguably the beginning of the early modern era. Everybody else, uh, of course, are there, their, their, their reliable genealogy traces not uh, go much further back than. 
addition of the design terrorist, performing terrorist record keeping. Uh, I'll, I'll stop here and then I'll welcome your questions. Thank you. Yes. Mm of the old dynasty, um, sooner or later, uh, compelled the Bourbon court to find that they still heir. But that uh, elapsed, uh, the, the elapsed time in the case of the Bourbon dynasty took uh, half a century, whereas in the case of uh, the Ming dynasty, which was done uh, uh, recently by a research by the scholar by the David Robinson, says that the Ming dynasty, which both the Mongol died in China, was a quite quick to find, you know, the search for find and they were then recognized as a member of the Mongol royal house to perform the same uh, duties. Having said that, I would also like to uh, suggest that uh, this is nothing new in the contemporary history. So we're going way back to uh, the, the Shang and the Zhou period. Yeah, when the Zhou dynasty, the Shang, the Zhou uh, when it came to, they wanted the Shang princess uh, to inherit her and to be the ancestor of uh, the, the Song founders of the Chang Dynasty, at least according to the legends of the same king, was a representative of the people of Shah. Um, that's the tall boy that you always see in the shadow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, the early of the Bozong court was in fact frequently made references to him both as a Chinese uh, executive. language scholarship that has been through and has to really um, uh, stress the rigidity of uh, the, the Bozong political establishment and the degree to which uh, the Neo-Confucian orthodoxy uh, gets to strangle. They, 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 just, uh, they just do not allow anything else. But um, at least the non-Western language scholarship, including the Korean language scholarship, and so the many stories that were sent to China, there was much uh, some diversity of to a certain degree, the state allowed the diversity of opinions as long as it did not uh, pose more obvious or immediate danger. And of course, that's uh, uh, subjective. You know. um, so for example, in the case of uh, uh, the well-known example of the anti-Catholic persecution, the Bourbon dynasty may have been tolerated it until uh, the, uh, the 1790s, I believe, when, um, when a young bun in the district reportedly burned the spirit tablets of their ancestors as a source of cultural superstructure. And uh, the court, after much uh, uh, intense discussion, decided that the petition was a good time of penance, and that they executed it. And, uh, and, for, and also by the early 19th century, uh, Catholicism was perceived as a sort of a vanguard of uh, the Western threat against uh, Korea, and so the violence of the petition um, began. So I think overall there was some room for diversity.
applied to almost any kind of accommodation. Uh, it does not apply to even all kind of the young ones that are specifically targeted at soccer teams. And uh, in that sense, in terms of not for special ones or a, a personal trait, it's a sort of a wish of these sorts of officials and even military commanders, but uh, there is certainly a not labor trait, although the most prominent representative from the 16th century play an important role that actually uh, uh, rallied sort of a very radical reform by the neo Confucian Gao Ka, uh, which went to be a Buddhist monk who was a, a, who was a Peru, who was an influence at the time, who was a monk and wrote a Christian book of the Qing Daoists, but uh, they got him out uh, for good. He was, a, he, was a good, he was the most prominent member of the ones who were involved. reported incidents or the possibility of a long tenure that they did. And uh, uh, something I always like to remind my students uh, is that, uh, uh, okay, I cannot say, we cannot say that the pre-modern Korea was isolated, but compared to many parts of like, Europe, it was not easy for people to just uh, be able to stand a boat at a time and get across a sea body of water, or you have to go through a barren, uh, not dangerous adventure, Nobody took that possibility very seriously at that point in time. To answer your second question, um, the, yeah, uh, as early as uh, uh, the early part of uh, uh, 10 years into Qing presidency, which began in 1400, uh, he clearly felt secure. Uh, he felt that the government had settled, that the secure was in charge, and thus, as I explained, that he uh, uh, issued and uh, that sense of a self-confidence grew uh, to the extent where by the reign of a king of Taejo, uh, 1460, um, he um, showered Wang Shizhe, uh, a royal that he found out of nowhere. And uh, uh, the way how he uh, related to interact with the Wang, Wang, Wang Shizhe is very interesting. According to the official Dozong history, Taito is telling him, you're not my subject, but you're, you're my friend as a representative of the previous dynasty. Therefore, your uh, ritual norms or your, your, your protocols towards me are different from uh, my ordinary uh, subjects of your ritual. Having said that, it is very clear from other details that they know he did not <laughs> want to regard himself as equal to the King Taito or the guest of the King he had to watch his behavior uh, because, if nothing else, Taito had come to thrones in 1465 with the support of uh, powerful um, civil and military officials with a large number of slaves, landed wealth, uh, and that he had to reward them accordingly. And from that point on, the Dozong dynasty, the throne for the next uh, few generations, was uh, they were heavily dependent on the court's will, the cooperation and support official. So the Wang Shiye was not in a position to behave as you think of a guest of a king table. Right? Um, yeah. Yeah. My next question is about the, uh, the basis for the new interest in the uh, ancestral wealth. Uh, at the beginning of the 19th century, the communism and Buddhism mm -hmm. spirits kind of still occupying the world you know, for a number of generations. Um, and then other times you mentioned about, you know, ideas of political decentralization, right? You need to have an heir mm -hmm. to the Taishan dynasty. And then 
sympathy, right? Mm -hmm. um, or even in some cases, a retribution. Right? So you have this kind of ironic answer to it uh, all. Right? Um, so I wonder kind of how you see it. Is it, is it really a, is it a spiritual issue that they feel they need to placate the spirit, mm -hmm. sort of the answer to the spirit? Or is it more, are you reading it more as a legitimization of mm -hmm. All of them. Uh, there is clearly multi dimensional. And as I believe is true of just about any Buddha uh, comment of Confucian or any combination thereof in Taiwan Korea, uh, a ritual can have uh, multiple meanings. And yes, in this case, uh, uh, first of all, uh, yes, it was about uh, legitimization. Uh, especially now that the dust has settled, the Gurung Dynasty must uh, do something to to everybody that the Wang Dynasty is a legitimate successor of the previous dynasty, which has its proper place in Korean history. Right? The second concern, of course, is uh, more tactical, right? Making sure that the Jews are rested uh, and that the spoils are not uh, 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 creating havoc or uh, difficulty for those of us, those of us who are still living. Uh, the third dimension is that, well, I guess it's related to the second dimension, sort of like a psychological need. And I, I, I do believe, that, I mean, the scholars, have uh, presented different interpretations of what Qing treasure, the Golden Dynasty found with two motives, right? That did he really care for the law? Or was he just uh, going through the motions uh, of uh, being benevolent? But I, I think he did the way we come across in other sources, his persona did feel guilty. And like a lot of these Wangs and uh, others, uh, he had known them for decades. And many of them are comrades or aunts or colleagues. Uh, so he did feel guilty. So there was a psychological, clearly psychological, Wangon, I believe, had, if I'm not mistaken, had 15 sons. Uh, so the education you wanted to be told. I'm only showing only the six. Uh, sort of like a minimum ranking chart.